This is the Mustang GT, an American icon, a sports car legend. It was first produced in 1965 and has not slowed down since. This new iteration has over 460 brake horsepower, and today we're going to review it. I'm here today with the Mustang GT. Today we're going to check out some of its features, we're going to see what's good about it, we're going to see some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like, and then at the end we're going to take it for a spin. So before we get into the exterior, I wanted to show you the key. So it's a typical Ford key. It actually is pretty big, which I like, and it is sturdy. Um, it's mostly plastic from the outside, but it does have some metal pieces on it that I think are really high quality, and I really like them. Um, so all in all, I think the key is good. The overall profile of this car is really elegant. It's sleek, and it's a lot better of a package than the uh, model it replaced in 2015. And I think that Ford did an incredible job with the body lines, the overall sculpting, and the packaging of the car. It doesn't feel like it's too bulky on the road, uh, coming from a lot of different European cars that are packaged a little bit smaller, a little bit more neatly. Um, I think this really competes at the global level. I'm just gonna activate the exterior lights by pressing the unlock button. And uh, as you can see, the LEDs light up. Um, I think Ford and General Motors and American brands in general do an excellent job with their exterior lighting. I reviewed an Audi uh, in my last car review and I noted that it didn't come standard with LEDs and you know with the starting price new around $40,000 I think that having standard LEDs these days is really important. Anyway, it has these three really nice um, sort of accented LED lights at the front and then it has a standard sort of yellow turn signal um, and it comes with bi-xenon headlamps which are excellent they work really well and they do adapt automatically to tra oncoming traffic and they get brighter automatically which is a really nice feature to have so let's check out the back tail lights uh, this is one of my favorite elements of the car um, it has a sequential sort of turn signal so it goes um, in a sequence, when you when you turn on the lights, it, it, the brakes are amazing. It looks like it has these little icebergs uh, within like a glass framing, which I think is a really good look. All in all, I think that Ford has done an incredible job with their uh, taillights on the Mustang GT. And now, because this is the convertible model, I'm going to drop the top and show you what that looks like. And it drops pretty quickly, which is a good thing. Let's go. The operation itself is fairly easy. There's a latch on the roof which you pull, you twist it sort of counterclockwise, and then you press a button right next to the central review mirror um, to actually drop the top. Um, when, when you press the button, it rolls down all the windows, and as you can tell, within a couple of seconds, the roof is dropped. Let's put the roof back. And with the same motion, you just sort of pull down a little bit, twist it clockwise, pop it back. So this interior is a really, really nice place to spend time. Um, it's not as luxurious as some of its European rivals, let's say the BMWs or the Audis. It doesn't have that type of attention to detail. They've definitely integrated some soft touch materials in the doors. They've integrated some really nice um, aluminum trim pieces all around the car. They have really nice interior lighting, which is great. Um, but overall, the fit and finish of this interior, I wouldn't say is at the level of a luxury car, but it is at the level of the car that it's supposed to be. Fun car that you can take out on the weekends and, you know, get it a little dirty and then enjoy cleaning it up later. It has a really, really modern digital display that looks beautiful. As you can tell, um, I have it in track mode right now, and it has different modes. I'm going to shift through them. This is what the normal mode looks like for the cluster appearance. Uh, it has two different gauges here, uh, which I think looks really clean, a little bit more elegant, a little bit more laid back. Then we have another cluster appearance, which is sport. It's sort of in between. As we can see, it, it's, it's a little bit of a half and half. 
Uh, it shows you your speed to the right. It also has a digital readout of your speed. And then it has um, your actual RPM meter, uh, a little bit more track or sport driving focused across the top there. Um, and this, this is what happens when I accelerate. Then there's my favorite, which is the track mode. So you have the rev meter up top, really track focused. The speed is a digital readout. Um, to the right, it shows me my lane keep assist, which is a nice feature, and this car is packed with features. And as you can tell, the engine sounds pretty damn good too, and we're gonna get an exhaust clip now. Secondly, I think that these seats are pretty damn comfortable. They have a seat adjustment here, which is sort of like a manual pull that fixes in place when you, you pull it forward. And then when you pull it for forward all the way, it releases and goes all the way back. I do like the thickness of the steering wheel. Um, it provides you with a lot of decent grip and it is high quality leather, which I really enjoy. Uh, I like the fit and finish of the big toggle switch buttons here at the bottom. Uh, next to the ignition start stop, um, which also, by the way, pulsates like a heart beating, which is really awesome. It's a nice little touch. And um, I do enjoy its shaker audio system. It provides a lot of bass. It, it just sounds fantastic, even with the top down. You're not gonna have any trouble listening to your amazing MGK track on full blast driving this thing without the top down. It's gonna be great. So we've checked out the Mustang's interior. We've checked out the exterior. And now we're gonna take it for a spin, see how it drives, see how it handles, and check out some of those features. We're in the Mustang. First impression, gotta go back to that whole look and feel of this thing. It's a really nice place to be. The cabin is solid. It's pretty well insulated. This is a convertible, you gotta keep that in mind. The actual hardtop has a lot more structural rigidity and is a lot more insulated than this one but for the convertible version, and that's my favorite, it's a nice place to be. I'm driving this thing today through some suburban areas, going between neighborhoods. Can't gun it in some of these spots. Of course, obeying the law. Gotta obey the law. But we are gonna take it out to some closed, closed areas where we can safely see what it's got. Wow, one of the things that you know, Ford did really well with this Mustang uh, as an upgrade from the previous generation is they, they really did a lot of work to upgrade its engine. Um, this V8, surprisingly, is really efficient. It's very linear in its power delivery. It's predictable and it sounds hella good. I think the previous generation, there's a lot of things that it lacked in my opinion. And folks, keep in mind, I'm a European sports car fan. I like the exacto knife feel of cars. I like it when cars can go fast in straight lines and crush corners. And the previous generation Mustang GT or Mustang lineup in general had uh, like a fixed rear suspension system. So if you hit a bump going around a curve, it would knock you off. So it was really hard to control. This one has an independent rear suspension, which is a huge deal. It really makes it a globally competitive sports car. And it drives like one. Honestly, it drives really well. Now there's still 460 brake horsepower going to the rear wheels alone. So traction control can only do so much, which is why you see an insert clip here. That, that happens. I mean, you know, it would happen to anybody that doesn't know what they're doing behind a wheel of a car that has all of its horsepower going to the rear wheels that's like 460 horsepower, but here we are. This is the day and age we live in. Man, I just cannot get over this digital dash. It's so nice. I mean, I've been driving this car for about a year and every single time I get into it, I still am just enamored by how cool the digital dash is. I mean, this is the future, really. User-centered design is taking over the car industry. Good example is the new Cadillac Escalade. It's got the biggest car screen in all of the car industry. It's massive, it's this curved screen. It looks like you're sitting home watching like a 32 inch LCD display. Is that a good thing? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. 
I think if there's a gripe I have with it, it would be in its steering feel. So it's got three steering modes, normal, comfort, and sport. And all three steering modes feel relatively numb in my opinion. And I, I don't mean that as compared to like a regular vehicle. I'm, I'm talking about comparing it to equivalent sports cars. Um, the Chevy Camaro has a much more sharp uh, steering feel. Um, and it, that is very confidence inspiring on the road. Uh, not to mention the European rivals like the BMW uh, M3, M4s, uh, the Mercedes AMGs. They all, they all really nail the steering. This steering, for some weird reason, just feels numb to me. Um, it feels way too heavy in sport mode, especially when you're going slow. You'll get an arm workout trying to move the wheel around. Um, in normal mode, it's okay. It feels balanced. It feels like a regular car. I mean, it steers well. It's responsive enough, but it doesn't give me back that that sort of feedback and th and, and and sort of uh, information through my hands, through the wheels that I that I want to experience. And uh, in comfort mode, it's it's a little bit too loose. So I'm not really a fan of the uh, steering. Maybe that's just me. What do you think? The biggest draw to this car is the fact that. You know, it gives you so much in such an affordable package. It gives you a four second zero to 60 time. It gives you a convertible. It gives you fine leather. It gives you technology. It doesn't give you a luxury car interior, but it gives you performance and enjoyment and I think above all fun. If you're responsible enough I should say to handle 460 brake horsepower going to your rear wheels, I strongly suggest you check out the Mustang GT. I just shifted it into sport. And there's a couple of corners around here, so I don't really want to go batshit crazy. Ready? Three, two, one. Whoa. That hits, that hits. It definitely burned out there too. Seriously, once you put this thing in sport mode, it's a whole different beast. All right, all right, this is a really good spot to do the quick zero to 60 run. Just gotta wait for this uh, Porsche to pass. All right, so that was in sport mode. Now we're gonna switch the mode and we're gonna put it in sport plus. Are we ready? Three, two, one. I got 60. Oh my god. I just love the sound of this car. The full package really sends. In particular, something I would love to mention is the fact that this engine redlines at 7,500 RPM. I'm talking about V8s, that's a pretty high revving V8. That totally knocks the, uh, the old generation out of the ball game. Um, this isn't a flat crankshaft V8 or whatever the one that the GT350 has, that one revs to 8.5K and sounds incredible when you take it that far. But this car in particular does a phenomenal job with the engine. The power delivery is so linear. The transmission works well. It's a 10 speed um, automatic transmission. It's not a dual clutch. And I have to say that the transmission is very responsive. It kicks really hard. Um, and it brings a smile to my face every time it downshifts. I think it's suspension is a little bit on the softer side. Now, this car does not come uh, standard equipped with the Magnaride, which is a really great adaptive setup. So I'm riding on the standard springs and coils, which are fine. They're just not, uh, they're just not that responsive. So I think that coupled with the steering being a little numb is what makes this for me a phenomenal GT Cruiser. It's something that I just want to take on, on the weekend through the countryside of Virginia, drop the top and really enjoy it with my friends. Maybe I have a couple of people in the back. Not a lot of room back there, so short trips only. But yeah, that, that's, that's my take on the suspension and general handling of it. Wow, just, ah, oh, gotta slam the brakes here. it out of this corner. Yeah, the speed. Oh man, it gets up there. It gets up there. I've always said that 
you know, 350 horsepower, 375 is a really good usable amount. Once you start going above that, you start to get into trouble territory. There's definitely no piped in exhaust note coming into this cap, and that is all from outside, and it sounds glorious. 460 brake horsepower of glorious American engineering. Ooh, a little bit of real spin coming out of that corner. And I'm not even pushing it. This is just Sport Plus mode. And it's got track mode. And it's got drag strip mode. Take this, put some slicks on it, take it to the course, get that, get that nine second dream. I hope my facial expressions are showing what this driving experience is like. The best things about this car is it's really easy to live with. I mean, if I take it out of Sport Plus mode and we're just in regular, we're just cruising down here, it's pretty comfy, got my heated seat on, got my heated steering wheel on, seats are comfy. I got enough room in the trunk. The trunk space in this car is excellent. You know, this is a really good daily commuter. If, you, if you're not worried about, you know, being a family hauler or carrying a lot of cargo, if, if you just don't have the need for that kind of stuff or you have an SUV, super relaxing, super reliable. I know Fords used to have a reputation of, you know, bad reliability. And I actually have a story. I, I flooded a Ford Freestyle engine, which is, which is an SUV because the air intake for the engine was mounted underneath the engine bay. Like, I don't know, it was just a fault in design. I drove through a puddle and it blew up my engine, literally blew it up. That's not the Ford I'm talking about. This Ford now took a step back, reevaluated their pro products and have engineered much better vehicles. And it shows. All in all, I love the Mustang GT. It's an absolute thrill. There's a big reason why. For 45 years straight, the Mustang GT has been the best-selling sports car in the United States. It delivers pure joy in a package which you can love day in and day out. I'm happy to see this Mustang roar into the future, even if that roar is electric. Lastly, thanks for tuning in to Drive In Time. This is brought to you by Ivan Veskov, and I would greatly appreciate you to hit the like button, share this content if you enjoyed it, and subscribe because I have a lot more in store coming this year.